Hey everybody, this is Liz with Northern Bell Farms and I'm getting ready to make some fermented hot sauce. Now, the end of the video has the hot sauce that I made um, or well fermented last week and made last night. So I'm going to put that on the end because it's the end process. So, but this is delicious. This is the lemon drop one. Um, we are going to do another lemon drop one with pineapple. Um, I'm going to do some kind of green one, so it'll probably have jalapenos, some kind of green peppers. It'll be a more mild one, so it won't be like a super hot sauce. Um, I'm going to do a sugar rush peach one with peaches, so it'll be a sweet and spicy one. And then right now I'm getting ready to make a, a Brazilian starfish and mango one. So I'm going to weigh this out. Um, everyone should have a good trusty kitchen scale, especially if you're a baker, um, because, um, baking a lot of times requires weighing things as you get a much more accurate outcome rather than if you scoop into cups, you're like, are you packing it? You know, is it over a little bit? Do you level it off? So usually a lot of baking stuff is in weight. So it's good to have a, a kitchen scale. Uh, we just got this one from Amazon, uh, where we get most of our stuff. Um, and I'm pretty sure this is going to be like two, here, we'll do it right now. I'm pretty sure it's going to be probably about two pounds of peppers. So, we're going to put that on and then tear it out so it says zero with the container on it. And we have the Brazilian starfish hot peppers. Then I'm in love with these habanadas. They're like sweet and kind of citrusy. They're really good. I've been putting them on lots of stuff. So I put that in there so they're not as spicy. And yep, we're on ounces. So we're looking for 16 ounces. I have an orange bell pepper here and a little um, white albino bullnose pepper um that i'm throwing in because they were part of this sweet pepper pint this week that nobody got and it'll help tone it down so it's not so hot because i don't like things so hot that you really can't enjoy it no. 14 you want some more 15 16.19, that's fine. So this mounded a little is one. One pound of peppers. And now we'll do This says 15.5, so like two or three more peppers from the garden and we'll have two. So, in assuming that I was going to have two pounds of peppers, I have these two half gallon jars that I'm going to cut these in half and I might pull some of the seeds out of some, um, just so they're less hot. And then I'm just gonna cut these ones in half and throw them in the jar. Um, and I'm gonna cut these up in just random chunks and throw them in the jars too. So when you cut up your peppers, you can feel free to take out the insides. I've been cutting them open and pulling out most of the seeds and just making a pile, um, taking out the seeds and the pith. But if they're too small like this and they're much smaller, I just cut it in half and throw that in there, whole, whole thing. Don't even bother. Um, then with the mangoes, I just chunk them up, throw them in. Take the seeds out, just scrape it. Put the tip of the knife in. I also forgot to tell you about my gloves. I got these gloves. Um, they're supposed to be cut resistant. A lot of the reviews were like, oh no, they're not. But I'm not really using them for big sharp knives or anything like that. I use them for peppers because I don't want to get the capsaicin on the baby. 
Um, and also my hands are really sensitive. Last night when I did the lemon drop peppers, um, I did it with my bare hands and I strained them and I picked it up with my bare hands and I woke up this morning and my hands felt like they were hot. So, and I had washed my hands twice last night after I did it. So, um, I guess either my skin's really sensitive or just the amount of peppers, I don't know. But these gloves are to keep my hands from getting the capsaicin on them. And also, I can go faster. I can, like, the knife can poke it and it doesn't hurt as much as if it was bare fingers. Here is my beautiful jars of peppers and mangoes, Brazilian starfish peppers, the nata pinos, and the mangoes. And then our next step is to do a quart of water and three uh, tablespoons of salt. And we want to mix them together and make a brine. So a quart is four cup. So we want four cups of water to three tablespoons of salt. I just have this pickling salt, so that's what I'm going to use because I, otherwise I have the, um, like this uh, crack shaker of uh, Himalayan pink salt and that would just be ridiculous. So, so we're going to take a spoon and we're going to do three. Three tablespoons of salt into our four cups of water. One, two, three. And we're gonna mix it up so that it dissolves in the water a little bit. We're gonna make a brine. It's going to, I guess, kind of preserve as it ferments. So now we'll pour it in here, and we want to make sure that the peppers, oh, always, what I tell you in the other videos, always making a mess. We want to make sure the peppers and everything are covered, and peppers do tend to float, see, it all lifts up, we don't want that, and it leaves a space at the bottom, so we're sure that it will be covered, but to make it, oh, hang on. <coughs> To make sure it stays covered, um, otherwise if the peppers are uh, in the air above the liquid, they will start to rot and then the whole thing will be bad and you don't want that. So, or else you'll have a bunch of work for nothing. And like I said before, they do make weights that I probably will eventually end up getting. Um, they're a little, oh my, it's hot. Oh. <coughs> <coughs> they make glass weights that um, hold the peppers down in the water. But I just filled up this Ziploc bag with water. Uh, squeezed as much air out as I could. And then I fold it up into a square so that it's like this. And then we push it in here. We take this over the sink. Push it in the rest of the way. We take it over here because right now some of the water's coming out. The brine. But that's okay. We'll just dump a little off. See, now our brine and all of our peppers are covered. This. The bug bag is pushing them down into the liquid so no air is touching them so they won't rot. And now we want to put the cover on. And then we're going to do the same thing with this. And then we're going to go set them on the shelf over there for at least a week. So next Wednesday. You do five to seven days. You could go longer. You could go a month. You could go six months. Really, a week is just fine, and it tastes good after that. So, um, here's the end. I'm gonna make a bunch of different 
kinds of peppers. I'm gonna, like I said, I'm gonna do the Sugar Rush Peach with the peaches next, and then uh, figure out what I'm gonna do about the jalapenos. And I think the pineapple's ripe, so I'm gonna have to do the lemon drop ones, I'm at, but I gotta go outside and pick more of those. And we have these ahi, shh, I forget what they're, they're the little ones in another video I showed you, I forget. But they're, they are super tiny, but they're fruity too. So I'm just gonna throw those in with the lemon drop ones, cause they're also an ahi, so. Here we are. Then I'll put the making of the lemon drop one last night to show you what we do when it's done fermenting in a week. And then I will show you at the end, I'll put a picture at the end of today of all the different kinds of peppers in the jars. So these are the jars that I've been fermenting for since Sunday. It's now Tuesday, so uh, nine days about they've been fermenting. We're going to take them over to the counter and we're going to strain the peppers and um, onions and garlic and all that out of the brine, the salt water brine that they're in. But we're going to do it over a bowl so we can save the brine. Each jar is um, one full recipe. I'll make sure I link the recipe below. Uh, okay, so you want to take a bowl or a big pot and we're going to put it in the sink so that way we can catch. These have been fermenting, and I haven't cracked them in a day or two. They're not too bad. The bubbles coming up. bags of water in the peppers. The peppers, see, as I took this out, it separated and um, the peppers floated up to here, but with this in, it pushes it down. Um, sometimes, um, actually they sell uh, like this plastic or glass weights um, that you can put in for your peppers to keep them submerged so they don't get like moldy while you're trying to ferment. But uh, they're $20 for a four pack, so I just filled a plastic bag with some water and put it in there. And it pushes it all down and keeps it down. So it works just as good. That just smells so good. This is lemon drop peppers, onions, and habanadas. And this is a double recipe. Each jar is one um, portion. Okay, definitely don't try this part at home. But I can't open it and I've tried to get my husband to open it. So he said to poke a hole in the top.
Second jar, second bag of water for the weighted to keep the peppers down. All the stuff, so let's just pull them all in the food processor. We're going to take all of our inside goodies, peppers, if you put any fruit in there, throw it in. All this goodness that's been fermenting. And it's going to be, it's going to be a cup of brine per thing. So we're going to need two cups for my two servings that I did. But there's still this much left in the bowl or in the strainer compared to how little this is. So I'm going to do a half a cup at a time. I'm going to scoop the brine from the bowl in the sink. I'm going to pour it in here. And then you add anywhere from three tablespoons to a quarter cup of vinegar. Depending on what you want to use for vinegar or what you want for taste, you can use apple cider vinegar, you can use white wine vinegar, you can use regular white vinegar. The vinegar also helps in the preserving, so you know, it doesn't have to be refrigerated. We're gonna do three, two, three tablespoons to start with. And then you can add honey, um, sugar, any kind of sweetener you might want to add to give it kind of a sweet heat. Um, this one, I'm gonna add probably a tablespoon or two of sugar. Um, because we're out of honey right now, or I would add that, or um, the other ones I'm going to do are going to have fruit, so I won't add any sugar. We'll do two and a half. Um, I won't add any sugar when I do the fruit ones. you ever find it like something sour or hot and you feel it in your ears or like back here by your jawbone I looked it up one time because my husband thought I was being ridiculous but it's a real thing I forget what it's called but when things are really sour or hot I say I feel it in my ears much more sweet so far this is my tenth tablespoon which makes it more like a quarter of a cup maybe between a third and a quarter Good. I used the whole thing, this whole thing, so I'm guessing that's about a third of a cup.
خليها بس صح اوكي انت ما جاش but I got five of them and a little bit extra in this one so almost six but it tastes really good and I can't wait to put it on everything and then um, I can't wait to make more Okay, here is the Sugar Rush Peach with the peaches in the brine. And here is the uh, Brazilian Starfish with the habanadas and the mangoes. So, let me know if you want an update on these or um, check back in um, for the other ones that I'm deciding on doing. And I will let you know. Leave me a message in the comments if you think I should sh keep sharing these with y'all. Um, don't conform, be transformed.